Hello world, my name is Ihor and today let's make music on the Octatrack and let's celebrate its another anniversary. It has been 11 years on the market. I got this particular machine, the anniversary edition, last year in December and I'm quite excited about it. It has been like really, really, really inspiring over this year. And uh, today I would like to use only samples that come together with the Octatrack on its compact flash and I will be focusing only on the samples from Mars. This library is quite deep and huge and it has a lot of good samples. So let's try to make a little track. Join me. And of course I would like to start with the first track and let's find our kick drum. I think there was the 909 kit with different kick drums. This one I think is going to be a good one. Perfect. So we're going to lay four on the floor. Uh, just before I start playing the music, I did a few things uh, on the octa track. So the track number eight is a master track. All the other tracks are flex tracks. Also, I set the audio into 24 bits. Also, I made like four pages here on the master track so that I can basically reset my internal clock and see where I am within like four bars. That's quite helpful. Yeah, so four on the floor, 132 BPM, let's do it. Beautiful. Let's make it shorter and also create some kind of a rumble. I'm gonna go into amp page. Beautiful. And then in the filter, distortion a little bit, not too much. Yeah, like that. And also on the second effect, I would like to add lo-fi and use this distortion as well, but a little bit later. And maybe some beat reduction or no, just a little bit of beat reduction. Yeah, something like that, but let's use the filter, of course, to filter out some higher frequencies. Just a little bit, like maybe louder. Yeah. And then I'm gonna copy this one here. Copy these guys over here. I think these guys are a little bit too loud. Yeah, like this. Let's copy those, paste them here. And now I'm gonna go into, into an LFO. So I'm gonna grab the first one, it's gonna be on trigger. And then I'm not gonna introduce the depth of this LFO. I'm gonna introduce depth only on a couple of triggers actually. So I'm gonna go into the destination, which is gonna be lo-fi distortion and wave exponential. Yeah, like that, no depth. And then we can go into the first one, introduce some depth here on the LFO page. I would like like the four on the floor guys to, you know, be a little louder with the transients. Like basically the envelope is gonna distort the first part of the, of the kick drum with the transients. And also like on these guys here, I would like for them to have a little different energy. So basically on the first kick, I'm introducing 51 depth and on the second 48. So it's going to be a tiny difference in the energy. This two kicks drum, two kick drums give nice. Maybe we can do the drone sound. Uh, let's go into the synth and there was, I think... So this uh, one is tuned to C1. I would like it to be in A sharp or B flat. So I, I would go and pitch it down to semitones. Now, if I go into the audio editor here, we can see this sample. I'm interested in this like buzzing kind of a thing right here.
yeah, I think this part is gonna work perfectly. Perfect. And then I would like to introduce same thing here. Uh, let's mute the kick drum. And maybe try to find a different spot. Okay. This one I think will work. So I'm gonna go into the filter. Filter out low end. Maybe distort it a little bit. Compensate the volume. And then in the LFO, on the LFO page, I'm gonna go into Amp Balance. Introduce a slowly moving LFO, something like this. This one is too slow, let's speed it up. Yeah, so I would like this buzziness to just slightly move from left to right. And now we have to work on the amp envelope actually, because right now I would like it to be like docking a little bit. So we need to introduce the tuck. And then hold should be less than three. So hold basically, as far as I understand, means one step. Like the numbers here mean steps, right? So, and since we have like four steps for one thing, I, I need it to be shorter than four steps and a little bit of release. And together with the kick drum. Yeah, it's, uh, we need to work a little bit. Maybe we can introduce lo-fi and uh, add some beat reduction. And let's go back to the amp envelope. And volume. Should be just like a dirtiness. Yeah, I like it. Let's go into the next one. And third one will be our bass line. So there was some kind of an acid sound here. Yeah, let's grab this one. And then we can also work on the amp envelope a little bit, just not to have it sounding like for a long time. And let's put some tricks. So I think This one can go one semitone up and let's work on the amp envelope and distort, compensate the volume and work on the filter envelope. Some reverb, indeed, is gonna be good. Dark reverb. We're gonna low pass and high pass it a little bit. Longer time. No shelves. It's too loud. Balance it a little bit to the right. Dirt is a little bit too loud now. Nice. Okay, let's go into the clap. 909 is gonna be too classic. Let's go into this one. No idea what this is, but... Yeah, this one, indeed, but we're gonna destroy it a little bit. So we're gonna reduce the rate like this. Let's put it over here. And yeah. And then in the amp, same thing. I need it. Yes. Maybe 
is some filter. Yes. So I filter out the low frequencies to have this kind of just a punch. And maybe I can put another one here, but I don't want them to be similar or like same. So this one is going to be like a click a little bit. Yeah. Maybe let's try to reduce the sample rate. Yeah, I think this is good. Chorus. Yes. Yes. Now if we go into the baseline, into the filter, So the open offbeat hi-hat will work, indeed. Yeah, let's uh, grab one from that same pack, actually. What about shaker? Maybe this one, but I think it's too high. Yeah, indeed. Now we can go distort. Perfect. Compensate the volume. Work on the envelope. Balance it a little bit to the left. Oh, I like it. Let's introduce like some different. Okay, that works. Nope. Okay, that works. We have to introduce some kind of another melody or RPG or something like that. Let's try to find some. So I would like to use some kind of a longer sample maybe, then slice it and um, basically play slices randomly so that it's going to be the same sound, but it's going to kind of grab different samples or different slices and use different like sonic characteristics or sonically it's going to be different, if it makes any sense. Anyways, um, we're going to go into synth. No, oh, maybe this one has quite a lot of different transient sound, but we can try. Let's try it. So if I go now into tra track number six editor, we can see that this sample is quite long. So I'm going to go into the slice menu and create slice grid. Six. Yeah, let's use eight slices just, just like that. And then if I go into the track source, I can switch it into the slice mode. And if we go into the slices here, so it's kind of the same thing, but every slice has different kind of different vibe to it. Same sound source, but different slices. I quite like it. And now if I go into the sequencer, I'm going to put some kind of like random thing here and there, something like this. And then again, going back into the slice menu, I can go and assign create random locks. So basically it's going to assign different samples to all these triggers here. So it's uh, going to be slices, not samples. Slice one, slice eight, and so on. Seven, five. Doesn't sound like anything good right now, but reverb usually fixes everything. Let's mute stuff. Okay, I think if I fix the amp envelope now. And now if we assign different slices, again, randomize them. 
once again. Okay, that's something. Everything must be distorted, right? Okay, and then we can utilize this. Okay, no idea how it's gonna work together with the rest of the sounds. We can also introduce the LFO here on the panning. Random shape. It doesn't matter what the speed is that much because it's it's gonna do some kind of like a sample and hold thingy. So if I use the hold over here. Uh, so basically the random shape is constantly generated, but then when trigger happens, the OctoTrack is gonna sample this value of this random shape and use it like multiply it by depth and then modulate the balance. Hope that makes sense. Let's listen. So it's basically coming from different angles. And now let's try to listen together with baseline and see if it works. No, I don't like it actually. <laughs> Maybe we can use another kind of uh, groove here or another grid here. Let me just remove these guys and see where I can put something. So let's start with... Maybe just, you know, less is more. Okay, this will work. Yeah, like this. Instead of the groove that we created before, which is one of the ways I would prefer to do this now. And we can go back into the slicing and again, create random locks. This is an LFO also works. Maybe touch more reverb and longer a little bit. We're gonna work on baseline a little bit more, I think. It doesn't sound as good as I want it to sound, but this one is already fine. Yeah. And the last track we can utilize for something percussive again. I'm gonna go into drums, hits, let's find some other folder. Found samples, perfect. Let me load all of them just in case, this one and this one. Okay, maybe hear something, just to add some kind of different sounds here and there, you know? Okay, that will work. And here I'm just using samples, not much else. But uh, let's also make it a little bit sharper, the envelope. I just want these transients to be present. Then filter out some low end from all of those. Touch of distortion. And as a second effect, Maybe we can have a flanger with a lot of feedback. Wide. And slowly modulating. 
maybe we can modulate the the flanger feedback with an LFO. So I'm gonna go into the LFO. So we have this sound. Uh, I'm gonna go, yeah, we can use slow one. Free is fine. Then going into the flanger feedback. Yep. Perfect. So it, it was the second LFO in the first one can go into the flanger delay. Just to create this kind of different, you know, percussive sounds that evolve with an LFO over time. And we have the third LFO. And this one can modulate the, there was a filter. Maybe we can modulate the Q with some sort of a random shape on the trigger. And then in filter, we can utilize an envelope Nice. Let's unmute stuff. I have a feeling that I always create the same bass line, always. And I think I created this kind of bass line already like thousands of times. Let's change it. What if we use another another acid sound or something? Let's go and find something else. I'm gonna go into the synth. So right now the sample is loaded and assigned to this track, but we can swap it on the way. So if I go into, I know, some FM square. <laughs> this one is a good vibe indeed. Maybe a different like mini house court. No, thank you. Modular. No, that is loops. Not bad. Let's check. That's interesting. going to trim oh yes this I think this one will work better we can go into scene number 13 and introduce some some of the width to the filter and maybe send it into reverb more massively. Let's mute some things. I'm gonna leave the baseline. Yeah. And on the master, we can introduce the compressor. So mix, yes, no gain, threshold. Yeah, like this. Okay. Probably I have to put a little bit more volume to the clap. Probably also on, on this one, uh, where we go 
more into reverb and stuff like that with the bass line into the second scene here, I can reduce the volume as well because I think it goes too loud. Yeah, like this. So let's distort the master a little bit, something like, like this, not too much, just before it goes into the, into the compressor. Okay, and now if I go into scene 14 here, we can basically, let me copy this scene 13, copy and then paste it here. And in addition to the reverb, I would like to also high pass the kick drum. So I'm gonna go into the into the filter and on the B introduce some bass. Okay, that works. And then on these guys, this one. this one. On scene 13, same thing, we can go introduce more reverb. And also maybe... make it a little bit wider, op widely open. And same, we have to compensate the volume a little bit because I think it goes louder. I think at this moment I can try to play this track and do some kind of a live arrangement. So I'm probably going to practice it a little bit for a few times. The one thing which I hate about the Octa track is the mutes. And it's, it's not like about the Octa track, but so basically you have tracks, right? Like from one to eight. And uh, the effects, they work inside of these tracks. So you basically, you chain these two effects into a track. And then you have mute afterwards. So basically, when you press mute, you mute the entire track. For example, and it mutes the effects, the tails of the reverbs and whatnot. So listen to this. Beautiful, right? But if you mute it, it kind of cuts. So because it mutes the entire track together with the, with the sounds, you know, with the reverb and stuff. So if you know how to mute on the octa track in a different way, please let me know in the in the comment section down below. I'm quite curious about that. Let's play it.
pretty much it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you've learned something new for yourself that you can apply to your own music production workflow. And if you're considering to buy the Octatrack, consider using the affiliate link in the description down below. It's gonna help my channel and help me without any costs for you. And if you would like to check another video where I make techno on the Octatrack, you can check this one. Or if you would like to learn how to set the Octatrack up to play with other gear, you can check that one. And until the next time, have fun.